Hey, Brainiacs! In our last episode, we learned all sorts of cool stuff about how stars are made and how they work. But we haven't talked about the coolest and most important facts about stars yet. Welcome back to Brain Candy TV. Our closest star, which we call the Sun, is very important for life on Earth. It provides heat for our planet so it doesn't freeze into a big ball of ice. Without heat from the Sun, we'd be surrounded by the freezing cold temperature of space, which is around minus 270 degrees Celsius. Yikes! That's incredibly cold! At those temperatures, life as we know it would not be able to exist. So luckily, we have a star close by to keep us warm. The nuclear fusion in the sun's core also produces light, so we can see during the daytime. It sure would be difficult to find our way around if we didn't have light from the sun. The energy from our nearest star travels at the speed of light for 150 million kilometers to get to Earth. When the sun's energy hits the green plants, they can use this energy to make their own food and to make oxygen for us to breathe in a process called photosynthesis. The heat and light provided by the sun is so important to sustain life for us, the animals, and the plants too. But the coolest fact about stars is that they created almost all of the matter around us and even the stuff that makes up our own bodies. We're all made of star stuff. Let's find out how that works. We've added a new device to our Space Explorer truck that can make it shrink down to the size of an atom. Okay, Lizzie, let's make ourselves really tiny so we can take a closer look at how atoms work. Get ready for subatomic mode in three, Two, one, go! Whoa! We shrunk all the way down to less than the size of a single atom. All matter is made up of lots and lots of these tiny atoms. Atoms are made of even smaller parts called protons and neutrons, which make up the nucleus in the center and tiny electrons that buzz around the outside. Some atoms are very light, like this hydrogen atom, which only has one proton and one electron. Hydrogen is the most common element in the universe, and stars are mostly made up of these light hydrogen atoms. When a bunch of hydrogen atoms are squeezed so much by gravity that they fuse together, it can make a new, heavier atom, which has two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. This new atom is called a helium atom. If an atom has a different number of protons, we call that a different element. Heavier elements can have many protons, neutrons, and electrons like this heavy element called iron, which has 26 protons and 30 neutrons in the nucleus and 26 electrons buzzing around it. Scientists have discovered 118 different elements so far. Long before humans, around 13.8 billion years ago, before the dinosaurs, and even before the planets and stars formed, there was a huge burst of intense energy that we call the Big Bang. When this energy expanded and cooled, some of the energy turned into very simple particles, since energy can turn into matter, as Albert Einstein described with his famous equation E equals mc squared. That's energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. 
At this time, the universe was a very simple place. There were no stars or planets, and almost all of the matter in the universe was hydrogen gas. As we learned in our previous episode, gravity squeezed clumps of this hydrogen gas together to make stars, where the hydrogen atoms fuse together to make new atoms like helium. But what happens when a star runs out of hydrogen gas for its nuclear fuel? Well, some pretty awesome stuff happens. When an average-sized star like our Sun runs out of fuel, its outer layers will slowly expand to over a hundred times its size, and it becomes a red giant. This will cook the inner planets of the solar system, but our Sun has enough hydrogen fuel for another five or six billion years, so none of us have to worry about that. When the outer layers of the red giant cool off, all that is left is a very small and very dense central core, now a little bigger than the size of the Earth. This leftover core of the burnt-out star is now called a white dwarf. This white dwarf will slowly cool and darken over many billions of years until it no longer gives off any heat or light. But if a star is 10 to 25 times as massive as the Sun when it runs out of fuel, it tries to fuse heavier and heavier elements together, like carbon and oxygen. But as the elements being fused get heavier, they release less energy during the fusion process. So when the star starts fusing elements as heavy as iron, it stops producing enough fusion energy to fight against the intense crushing force of gravity. The star's core collapses, and its outer layers smash into the core with incredible force. This creates one of the most powerful explosions in the universe. A supernova! The supernova releases so much energy then it can shine brighter than all of the other stars in the entire galaxy. Supernovas are so powerful that they can fuse many new types of heavy elements, like silicon, which is important for making rocks, and many of the metals we use every day, like aluminum, nickel, and copper. The supernova explosion sends all of these heavy elements far and wide across the galaxy, as a huge nebula, where these elements will later be pulled together by gravity to form new stars and planets. Our own Sun was probably formed from one of these ancient exploding stars. But not all of the material went into the Sun. Some of the extra gas and dust formed into asteroids, comets, and planets. This means that our planet, and everything on it, including us, are literally made of star stuff. Here is a scale model of our Sun and Earth in a stadium. The Sun is huge! It weighs about 333,000 times as much as the Earth, and you could fit around 1.3 million Earths inside of it. After a large star goes supernova, it leaves behind a very hot and very dense core. This core weighs up to twice as much as our Sun, and when it collapses after a supernova, it gets squished smaller and smaller until it's all the way down to the size of a small city. It's now only about 20 kilometers wide but still weighs up to two times as much as the Sun. That's like if we took a star that was taller than this stadium and squeezed it down to a little bigger than a grain of sand. Whoa! Can you imagine how dense that matter would be when squeezed down that small? When the core of a large star shrinks down to this incredibly small and dense state after a supernova, it's now called a neutron star. But how can all that matter be squished down so small? 
If the nucleus at the center of an atom was blown up to the size of a pea, the tiny electron would be too small to see, and it would be buzzing away in the area the size of a large stadium. Wow! The nucleus is tiny compared to the size of an entire atom. There is also some space between the atoms. But when a star goes supernova, all of the electrons get squished down into the nucleus. So there are no more forces keeping the atoms apart. And these squished atoms get crammed together until they are touching, making it extremely dense. A neutron star is so dense that a single teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh much more than the Great Pyramid of Giza. In fact, it would weigh almost as much as 1,000 Great Pyramids. That's around 6 billion tons. Whoa! It's amazing to imagine one tiny teaspoon of neutron star matter would weigh as much as all of those heavy pyramids on Earth. Neutron stars are incredibly dense, but there's one thing out there that's even more dense than that. We've had reports of a supernova taking place, so we've traveled far across the galaxy just in time to witness the collapse of a large star's core. When a really large star goes supernova, the core is squeezed so hard by gravity that it collapses completely. The atoms of the star's core are crushed together to a tiny point to make something called a black hole. The gravity around this black hole warps space-time so much that even light can't escape its pull. That's why it looks black. And the only way we can see it is by how it bends the space around it. Or by the superheated dust and gas that it pulls in from nearby objects as it eats everything that gets too close. We'd better stay away from the edge of this black hole. This edge is called the event horizon. And anything that reaches that point can never escape because it would have to travel faster than light. And nothing can travel through space faster than light. When a black hole consumes huge amounts of gas, planets, or other stars for millions of years, or if many black holes merge together, it will create a supermassive black hole. There is a supermassive black hole in the center of most galaxies, including our own. The supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy weighs over 4 million times as much as the sun. It's a good thing we live way out here and far away from that supermassive black hole. The extreme gravity around a black hole warps space and time. This makes time move slower and slower as you get closer to the black hole's event horizon. If you traveled to a black hole, time would feel normal to you, but time back on Earth would have appeared to move much quicker. So if you stayed very close to a black hole for a while, then came back home to Earth, much more time would have passed on Earth than it did for you and it would be like you traveled way into the future. Cool! Stars and black holes are so fascinating. The next time you look up into a dark sky on a clear night, you'll know that there's so much more to stars than just some pretty lights in the sky. Stars give us heat, light, and energy to make life possible on our little blue planet. And thanks to dying stars, our universe is filled with the wonderful variety of elements that created our planet and eventually all the life contained within, including you and me. Hopefully one day, humanity will be able to return to the stars to learn even more about where we came from. 
In the words of the great astronomer Carl Sagan, we are in the cosmos and the cosmos is within us. We're made of star stuff. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. Hey parents, if you and your children have been finding value in Brain Candy TV and would like to send your thanks, you can make a quick and easy one-time donation at my Buy Me A Coffee page at buymeacoffee.com slash bctv. Or you can scan the code here. Your support would mean a lot. Also, thanks to our amazing Patreon patrons for your monthly support of our show. Special thanks to our new Super Brainiacs. Alexander and Phoenix, Cadewin and Lielse, Lucian and Lorenzo, Wilson and Jack, Halen, Getty C, Ashton, Samson and Susie, Tate, Rowan, Riker Thrasher, Holly, Oliver and Noah, Ethan Baker, Baby Levi, Galilee, Connor, Ari, Harrison M, Jack, Everett, Jack's Wild, Odin, Carson, Vincent, Lane S, Owen, Aiden George, Elijah, Simon Peter, Jameson, Dresden Bailey, Hendrix, Bailey and Lexi, and Callum and Henry as well as our new fire truck level brainiacs, Neil, Clark, Patrick, and Alexandra, Emmett and Henry, Rupert, Finn, Jacob Eastman, Walter Pear, Luke, Remy and Reagan, Bo, Joseph, Arthur, and Eddie, Peter Edwards, Nixon, Ricky Rodriguez Huey, and Geo Bear. You're awesome! Thanks for watching, Brainiacs. See you next time.